So let's talk about adding an additional hard disk into your Linux server. Now, in my VM here, let me go ahead and make this thing full screen. Uh, in my VM here, I've just added two new uh, hard disks. So I want to display them, so I'm going to use the command fdisk-l. <sighs> Switch to root. And then do fdisk, there we go, that'll work better, dash L. Okay, so here are my disks. In the first one, you see forward slash dev forward slash loop zero, dev loop one, uh, dev SDA. Now, this was my existing hard drive. So that was the first one I had, it was 127 gigabytes. And down below that, you'll see I have dev SDA one and dev SDA two. Now, depending on what you have, it might look slightly different. Now, all of them are going to be in the forward slash dev voltage. So you're going to have forward slash dev forward slash, and then it's going to depend on how you're connected. Now, in this case, we're seeing, we're identifying this, them as SD. So my three hard drives are SDA. And then down below that, you'll see SDC and SDB. Um, you know, your partitions are going to show up as, and you'll see them as dev SDA1 and dev SDA2. And it will show you the device, the start and end, the number of sectors, the size, and which type. So you see our BIOS boot is dev SDA1, dev SDA2 is 127 gigabytes, that's our Linux file system. Now, SDC and SDB nothing on them whatsoever. So those are the two brand new ones that we've just put in. Uh, we can also look at LSBLK and this is going to show us our devices as well. So name FD0, loop 0, loop 1, SDA and then underneath that you see those two partitions SDA1, SDA2 and then SDB and SDC. So they're both 50 gigabytes but we got nothing on them right now. Okay. So, I want to take SDB. We're going to save SDC and we're going to use that a little bit later on in another video when we do logical volume management. So, we're going to work with SDB. So, we're going to issue the command fdisk to deal with our disks and we're going to specify dev SDB. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to FDisk, our Linux utility. Changes remain in memory only until we write them. When you write it, it becomes permanent. So you'll see down here, Command or M for Menu. So let's look at our menu first. And here are all of our commands. Now, we want to create a GPT partition table. You can do it either GPT or MBR. doesn't really matter. But we're going to do a GPT partition table. And I say it doesn't really matter. MBR is the older style. Either one will work. There are some limitations with MBR that it doesn't handle disks above 2 terabytes. It doesn't have, handle more than 4 primary partitions. GPT doesn't have some of those limitations. GPT will one day become the standard. Uh, at the moment, it's not. Um, although some people may disagree with that. But we're going to create a new GPT partition table. So we're going to type G and hit enter. And it gives us a new GUID for it. So back to um, the partition or back to our options. And you'll see under generic N, we can use N to add a new partition. So we're going to create a new partition. It's going to be partition number. We can specify whichever the default is one. The second one will default two and then so on and so forth. We're just going to go partition one because we really don't care. First sector, this is where it's going to be put on the desk. So we wanted to start at the beginning of the disk, so that's going to be 2048. So we just hit enter. And then last sector. Now, we can put in the uh, sector number that we want it to stop at, or we can do to size like plus 40G would be add 40 gigabytes after that first sector. The default is uh, the last sector. So the default is to do its full size. We're going to go ahead and do the full size, all 50 gigabytes, and we created a new partition, uh, type 1 of Linux size, or of Linux file system, and size is 50 gigabytes. Now remember, this doesn't take effect until we uh, write it. So we're going to hit W to write our changes. And that just did it. All right, so now if I do a, let's do LSBLK again. And now we're going to see under SDB, we've got SDB1, which is a 50 gigabyte partition. Now, at this point, it's not ready to use. We have to format it. 
So the command is mkfs or make file system dot and then you're going to specify how you want that file system formatted and we're going to do ext4 and then we need to specify what we're going to uh, which partition we're going to format so it's dev dev there we go get it right sdb1 and that should format that as an ext4 partition and it's working on that right now all right there we go now it's still not ready to use until we mount it and before we mount it now unlike windows we don't have drive letters right so we need to mount this uh, in into our existing file system in fact let me do let me clear the screen and do an lsblk and you'll see SDIA2 is uh, mounted to that forward slash, and that's our root file system. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty folder, and then we're going to mount this drive to that folder. And then when somebody goes into that folder, it will actually store on that drive. Now, Linux has a couple of file uh, folders set up for this already. So I'm going to do ls forward slash and just show me the root of home or the root and let's do ls dash l to make that a little bit easier to read all right and we're going to see under m's you're going to see two of them there you're going to see one named media and one named mmt media is intended for things removable storage basically um flash drives cd drives those will tend to be mounted in the media they don't have to be you can mount them anywhere you want uh, but that's where they tend to be and then mnt is intended for longer term mount points now again it doesn't have to be right so you can put these things anywhere you want you can create a folder called storage or data or you can create different folders for every department and give them all their own drive you can mount them in the home folder you can put this thing anywhere you want we're going to go ahead and put it in the mnt folder so i'm going to create a new folder mkdir forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 and that's going to create an empty folder there so ls dash l forward slash mnt and we're going to see hdd2 empty folder nothing in it now we're going to mount it and we mount it using the mount command so it's mount forward slash dev forward slash sdb1 we're going to mount it to forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 and now it mounts so now if i do df dash h which remembers our disk free human readable format this is going to show me that last line there, dev sdb1 has 47 gigabytes available and it's mounted in mnt forward slash hdd2. So if I go there, cd forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2, now anything I do, do ls slash a to view all of it, uh, anything I do there is actually going to be saved on that additional hard drive. But it all fits into the same file system. Um, by the way, at this point, you might be thinking, wait, aren't we using file system for more than one thing? Yeah, actually, we are. So we use file system to describe the type of file system that we're formatting. So ext4 is a file system. That's how files are stored. We also use the word file system to talk about where files are located and that's going to be in that root file system and we'll use the word file system for both and you kind of have to interpret from context what it is that we're talking about okay now i have my drive added to my system i created a gpt partition table i created a partition i formatted the partition i mounted the partition it is fully operational at this point i'm going to do cd to go back home and clear now everything is great except that when i reboot this device it's not going to remount that new drive i have to mount that new drive in the etc fs tab which stands for file system table i need to put it in there because only things that are in that etc fs tab file are going to be um automatically mounted when the system loads. So I'm going to use my text editor nano 
forward slash etc forward slash fs tab and you have to be root when you do this now i'm going to add a new partition so i'm just going to down arrow twice and i'm going to put in this new line and this new line is going to be forward slash dev forward slash sdb1 so that's the device that i want to mount i'm going to mount it to forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 now i did this using dev sdb1 you also could do it using and you're going to see this on the top one up there you could also do it using the uuid um, universal unique identifier <clears throat> and there are some benefits to that but as you can see that uuid tends to be kind of long so i'm not doing that i'm just doing the location um, and if this is something that i was going to unattach and reattach on a regular basis it might create a problem and that's where i would use the uuid um, especially if you're doing removable devices that will be plugged in different orders and the numbering might change so there you'd want to use a uuid but since this is permanently attached i'm not going to worry about it too much all right um, then i'm going to define how uh, so i've defined the device dev sdb1 where i'm going to mount it to mnt hdd2 i'm going to define the file system and it's an ext4 file system i'm going to use the defaults and your textbook will tell you what all the defaults stand for and then zero and two now um this has to do with the past in which things are checked your um your root file system should always be zero zero and other ones typically will put them as zero two all right now i want to save this file so i'm going to do control o to write out the file and then control x to exit now i want to find out if this is going to work so i'm going to start by unmounting my file system so it's u mount to unmount forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 and that will unmount my file system df dash h will show me that i no longer have dev sdb1 okay so that's unmounted now i can issue the command mount dash a which tells it to auto mount or mount all entries in the etc fs tab with the auto option in other words everything is supposed to auto mount mount it now i didn't specify the auto option but that is one of the defaults so when i did defaults that specified auto so i do mount dash a and by the way i can do this without hurting anything because it doesn't unmount any of my file systems it just adds any new ones that weren't there df dash h and if everything worked right here is my dev sdb1 remounted to mnt hdd2 so at this point i have added that to my fs tab and i have verified that everything is working correctly that will be there from this point on whenever i load this system all right so we just added a new drive set it up configured it set it to auto mount we're good this is everything you would do when you go to add a new drive to extend expand the linux file system